Chevron gas station invites you to... Let's yours do it. Brought to you by the makers of climate-tailored Chevron Supreme Gasoline and RPM Compounded Motor Oil. Valentine would be the last person in the world to take a job that was not exciting, even with a large salary attached. That's why he opened his office and advertised to solve any problem for a fee, of course. Well, he's had his excitement, all right, sometimes more excitement than he bargained for. Right now, George, his secretary, Claire, and Sonny are driving along in his car. Mr. Valentine, why so much mystery? Where are we going? Just playing hooky from the office, huh, Mr. Valentine? We can't afford to play hooky, Mr. Valentine. You know that. Have you two ever heard of the Harding Bookshop? Not I. Never. Why? Should we have? Well, that's where we're going. To buy a book? Of course not, Sonny. Mr. Valentine has a book. (laughs) Here, bright girl, take a look at this newspaper clipping. What does it say, sis? Hmm. William Harding, eccentric owner of the Harding Bookshop, died in his sleep last night. He leaves his widow Harriet and a nephew Frank. Mr. Harding had been in poor health... Okay, that's enough. Well, what about it? Man dies in his sleep. Where do we come in? Well, his widow phoned. She wants me to meet her at the bookshop at 11. She made it sound urgent. Jeepers, I wonder why she wants to see you. An eccentric book dealer dies in his sleep. His widow is very anxious to see me. Kids, I don't know what it's all about, but it has all the ingredients for some real excitement. No use, Mr. Valentine. The bookshop's closed. Maybe Mrs. Harding hasn't arrived yet. Wait a minute. I think I hear someone in there. I'm sorry, but we're not open for business. The shop is closed. Oh, Mrs. Harding, I'm Mr. Valentine, and these are my assistants. Oh, of course. I've been expecting you. Come in. Supper and cats. Look at the place. Books scattered all over. Yeah. Somebody been searching for something, Mrs. Harding? You can see why I called you. Someone broke in here last night. Did you phone the police? No, uh... No, I didn't. No? Why not? Because I think it was an inside job. The windows were securely locked. They don't look as though they'd been tampered with. Someone unlocked the door and walked right in. I see. You suspect someone in your family. That's why you didn't phone the police. Mr. Valentine, I won't try to keep anything from you. I suspect my husband's nephew, Frank. Did he have keys to the shop? As far as I know, my husband and I had the only keys. But you must have some reason for suspecting Frank. Well, he's always been a wild boy. I never had any use for him. My husband was fond of him. He even had Frank helping here in the shop. Uh, Mrs. Harding, just what was this person looking for, do you know? Money. Money? I'm not sure, of course, but I think my husband had some money hidden away here. Uh Uh-huh. You may have heard my husband was... Well, he was odd. It would be like him to hide the money in his shop. Then he mentioned some money to you? He always said that we'd be well taken care of in our old age. And yet he died penniless. I see. And uh, just what do you want me to do? If there's any money here, I want you to find it. I'll pay you, of course. Oh, of course. But the shop's already been searched. Maybe the money's been found. I don't think so. You see, I frightened the person away. Oh, then you saw someone. I just caught a glimpse of someone running away. It was dark, but I think it was a man. Mm Mm-hmm. Why did you come down here last night, Mrs. Harding? I, uh... I wanted to look around myself. Oh, yes, yes, of course. All right, Mrs. Harding, I'll keep in touch with you. Come on, kids. I'll be waiting to hear from you. Let's go, kids. What do you make of it, Mr. Valentine? Say, quite a girl, isn't she? Her husband dies, and that same night, she's down at his shop looking for any money he may have hidden. Well, why don't we stay here and search the shop? Because someone beat us to it, Sonny. Besides, I want to know a little more about this case. And a little more about Harding's death, too. Mr. Valentine, do you mean... Do you think he was murdered? Uh, I'm just guessing. Come on, let's go to the car. Hey, wait a minute. I want a word with you. Jeepers, I wonder who that is. Must be the nephew. I just want to warn you not to believe half of what my aunt tells you. She's she's not herself. She's hysterical. Oh. Well, I don't agree with you, Frank. Your aunt seems unusually calm, considering. Calm? She called you in, didn't she? If she knew what she was doing, why would she call in a private investigator? How did you know I'd been called in? Well, you were, weren't you? Suppose she told you there's some money hidden away. That's a lot of baloney. Is it? You're just wasting your time. They said some money disappeared after my father died, too, but we never found any. 
There's always that kind of talk when some eccentric dies. Just when did your father die? Five years ago. Uh-huh. Frank, were you with your uncle when he passed away? No. It was during the day. I was in the shop with my aunt. Miss Barry phoned us. Miss Barry? Alice Barry, the nurse. My uncle's known her since she was a child. Of course, she's a young woman now. Very attractive, too. Okay, Frank. See you again sometime. No, you won't. I'm going to tell Aunt Harriet to call you off. Yeah, do that. You think she'll listen to him, Mr. Valentine? No, she doesn't trust him. Claire, I want you to get all the information you can on Harding's death and meet me here. Here? Yeah, in front of the bookshop about 10 o'clock tonight in Sunny. Yes, sir. Get down to the Evening Express. Talk to Ben Steele. He's a friend of mine. He'll let you look through the old newspaper files. But what am I going to be looking for? Well, Frank's father died five years ago. Get what you can on it. Okay, Mr. Valentine. Hey, what are you going to be doing? Oh, he's going to talk to the nurse, of course. Why, Claire, how did you get... Oh, she's young and attractive. Naturally, you'd want to investigate that yourself, Mr. Valentine. Mr. Harding had been ill for years. There was nothing mysterious about his death. But don't take my word for it. Talk to Dr. Mark. Oh, I'd rather talk to you, Miss Barry. And I know Mr. Harding didn't leave any money. You're wrong about that, too. (laughs) If you don't mind my saying so. Miss Barry, when a woman is beautiful, she can toss my theories into the ash can, and I don't open my mouth. I'll find that out after I get to know you better. Oh? You're going to know me better? Of course. What makes you think Harding didn't leave any money? Because he couldn't even afford to pay me a salary. He gave me this box of old phonograph records instead. I see. Uh, Miss Barry. Alice. Alice? Alice. Alice, uh, did Harding die in his sleep? Oh, yes. Then he didn't say anything before he died? Mm, Well, he mumbled something. Mumbled something? What, could you tell? I suppose he thought he was a little boy again, listening to Mother Goose. Why? What did he say? Mary had a lamb. Mary had a lamb? Are you sure? Well, the words Mary and Lamb were plain enough. Uh-huh. Look, here's my card. If you think of anything else, give me a buzz, will you? I'll give you a buzz. Oh, good. Say, uh, how does that verse go? Do you remember? Mary had a little lamb. Its fleece was white as snow. Oh, yeah, yeah. And everywhere that Mary went, the lamb was sure to go. <laughs> I was detained. By the nurse? Now, never mind. What are we going to do, Mr. Valentine? Well, we're going to get inside this bookshop. Hey, Mr. Valentine, where did you get those keys? They've opened lots of doors. See? Never fail. I'll try to find the light switch. Now, don't bother. I'll use my flashlight. Sonny. Yeah, Mr. Valentine? Stand near the window, will you? Let me know if you see anyone. Okay. Mr. Valentine, the books are all back in place. Well, Mrs. Harding must be a neat housekeeper. Come on, Claire. Now, we're looking for the section that has books for children. Then the nurse did give you a clue. Was she helpful? Oh, yes. And beautiful. Really? Tell me about it. Well, I haven't time. Couldn't do it justice. Here we are now. Uh, let's see. Peter Rabbit, Alice in Wonderland. Hey, look for Mother Goose. Is she a blonde? Yes. Treasure Island. A natural blonde? Oh, Claire, will you concentrate on Mother Goose? Oh. Is this what you're looking for? Yeah, good, good. Now find Mary had a little lamb. Why? Oh, Claire. Oh, all right. Little Jack Horner, little Miss Muffet. Mary had a... Oh, here it is. Good, good. Now read it. Mary had a little lamb. Its fleece was white as snow. Uh-huh. And everywhere that Mary went, lamb was sure to go. Do you want all the verses? Well, isn't there anything written on that page? No. Well, maybe there's some more Mother Goose books. These are all there seem to be. Okay, hang on to it. Put your hands up. <gasps> oh, Mr. Valentine, soft burn cats. Well, now, what are you doing here, Frank? Where did you come from? I was in back. I've been waiting for someone to show up. Why? What made you think someone would show up? Well, the place was ransacked last night. And you thought it might happen again tonight, huh? You can't tell. And Harriet says she frightened the person away. He might come back. Uh Uh-huh. That may be why you're here. Or then again, you might be looking for the money yourself. I told you there isn't any money. Okay, Frank. Now put that gun away. You might hurt somebody. Get out of here, all of you. All right, we're going. Coming with us? I'm going to stay here and keep an eye on things. Say, that's a very good idea, Frank. Just keep an eye on things. Fleece was white as snow. Everywhere that Mary went, the lamb was sure to go. I could oh, Mr. Valentine, it's a little late to be reading Mother Goose. Well, look, here's what we've got so far, kids. 
Harding's brother, who's supposed to have money, dies, but he doesn't leave anything. On the other hand, Harding, who's supposed to be poor, tells his wife they'll be provided for in their old age. Oh, I see. You think he had his brother's money. And he hid it in his bookshop. That's what Mrs. Harding thinks, and so does Frank. Well, go on. Well, this Mother Goose rhyme should lead us to the money. Why? Because Harding tried to tell Alice about it before he died. Alice? The nurse. Oh, first name. Oh, definitely. Hey, who'd be phoning at this hour? Hey, get it, will you, Claire? Hello? Is Mr. Valentine there? Yes, who's calling? Alice Barry. Oh, just a minute. Your nurse. And she's not a natural blonde. I can tell by her voice. Oh, have it your way. Hello, Alice. Mr. Valentine, maybe I can help you after all. Yeah, what's up? Would you remember that Mr. Harding left me a box of records? Yes. Well, I was looking through the box of phonograph records when suddenly I... Oh! Hello. Hello, Alice. Mr. Valentine, what's the matter? Something's happened to her. I've got to get over there quick. <laughs> Well, it'll take George a few minutes to get to Alice's apartment. Meantime, I'd like to tell you about a conversation I had recently. One of my Chevron dealer friends asked me the other day what qualities I look for in a gas station. So I said that first of all, I looked for Chevron Supreme gasoline and RPM compounded motor oil. Well, that's easy, he said. Just keep your eye peeled for a cream green and burgundy station. That's your cue for Chevron. Then I told him that I'm a credit card user. Don't blame you, says he, and don't forget that Chevron credit cards are as good as gold at our stations. So then I told him my favorite gas station must be a friendly place where I can depend on getting good service for my car. The dealer laughed and said, sure sounds like a Chevron gas station to me. We all had plenty of experience before branching out on our own. Now that we're in business for ourselves, we know how to keep our customers happy by keeping their cars in good shape. I had to agree with my friend... Chevron gas stations offer just about everything a motorist wants. Try them yourself and see. Well, George was about to get some important information. The nurse, Alice Barry, phoned him, but before she could explain, something happened to her. Now it's a few minutes later, George is opening the door to her apartment. Alice, Alice. Oh, oh you poor kid. Oh. Here, let's get you up on that couch. Oh. Now, take it easy. You've got to be all right. Oh, Mr. Valentine. Wait a minute. I'm going to put you down here. There you are. Now, you better lie still for a few minutes. I'll get you a drink of water. No, no, please don't leave me. Now, don't be frightened. Hey, you've got a nasty-looking bruise on your forehead. Otherwise, you seem to be okay. How do you feel? Oh, like I've got two heads. Yeah, I'll bet. Want to tell me what happened? Well, there isn't anything to tell. I was talking to you on the phone, and, and then it happened. Somebody took a sock at me. Well, who was it? Don't you know? No. He must have crept up and hit me from behind. From behind? Yes. Oh, you didn't see him at all, huh? No. For all I know, it might have been a woman. Yeah. It might very well have been a woman. What about the records? No, well, I guess they're gone. They were on that table over there. That's bad luck. Oh, don't worry about them. It was just an old bunch of records. Believe me, if all those endearing young charms, who is Sylvia, and a few more like that. But I thought you discovered something about them. I guess the person who stole them thought so, too. No, Mr. Valentine, that's not why I phoned you. Feel like telling me about it? Of course. You see, while I was looking through the record, I got to thinking about Mr. Harding and, and what he'd said just before he died. Yes? I could almost see the whole thing all over again. He was moaning and, and tossing around in the bed. I ran to him and felt his pulse. Go on. I told you that he said Mary had a lamb. But now as I think back, Mr. Valentine, I'm almost certain he said, Mary Hayden Lamb. Mary Hayden Lamb. Mary Hayden Lamb. A woman's name? That's right. Do you think it means anything? Well, it must mean something. Yeah. It'll probably lead us right to the money. That is, if there is any money. Um, now, look, i got to beat it. But I want you to lock the door behind me, understand? Don't worry. After this, I'll always lock my door. Good. Better put some ice in that forehead. It's turning a beautiful purple. I'll be all right. Uh, Mr. Valentine. Yeah? If it does mean anything, will you let me in on it? <laughs> I feel as though I have a stake in this now. Oh, I don't blame you. Okay, Alice. I'll keep in touch with you. Hey, open up. Hey, Mr. Ward. Mr. Ward, hey, open up. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait. You, you out of your mind? 
What are you doing here at this hour? Well, I want to buy a book. Well, go away, go away. We're closed. Come back in the morning. Oh, now, wait a minute. Don't close the door, Mr. Ward. i got to have something to read tonight. Do you realize it's after 11? I know. I'm terribly sorry, but let me in, will you? Oh, all right. I'll come in. Other people have sane customers, but I suppose it's got to be a mystery with at least six murders <laughs> in it. <laughs> Mr. Ward, did you ever hear of a book called Mary Hayden Lamb? Never, no. Are you sure? I came here because you have a reputation for knowing every book that's ever been published. There's never been a book published by that name. Now, however, if you were to ask if there were ever a novelist by that name, I'd, I'd give you a different answer. A novelist? Hey, of course. Why didn't I think of that? Well, tell me about it, will you? Well, she was a local writer, and to my knowledge, she wrote but one book, thank heaven. Why do you say that? Because it's by far the worst trash it's ever been my bad luck to read. I see. What's it called? I Love Love. It's about a girl and an island and a man. And if you want something to put you to sleep, I'll personally guarantee you your money back. <laughs> then you've got a copy, huh? One. Almost sold it this afternoon. Almost sold it? Is that so? Someone wanted it, huh? Well, ask me about it anyway. But evidently I had the good taste to turn it down. I found it on the counter when I was putting my books away. Well, who asked to see the book, Mr. Ward? Do you remember? Certainly not. I do a big business, young man, and I can't keep track of every customer who walks into my shop. Unless they make a special impression by getting me out of bed at this unearthly hour. <laughs> okay. Anyway, you've made a sale. I'll take Isle of Love. No, oh, you've made a bad choice. Yeah, here you are. Mark down 89 cents. And young man, believe me, I'm cheating you. Hey, Claire. Sonny, come on, wake up. Oh, hello, Mr. Valentine. May we go home now, slave driver? Oh, I'm sorry, kids. I know it's late, but we can't stop now. Don't dare take the chance. Somebody may be getting desperate. What do you mean? What do you expect to happen? Well, nothing, if I can beat him to it. Now, Claire, I've got a job for you. How are you in the charm department? Charm? Yeah, that's right. Have you got any? Don't answer that. Whom do I have to charm? Frank. The nephew? I quit. Hey, I knew he was suspicious. As soon as I saw him, I said to myself, now there's Shut up, guy... would you, Sonny? Claire, I want you to get Frank out of the bookshop tonight. So that you can get in there without his seeing. That's the idea. Think you can do it? Oh, it should be simple, even if my hair isn't blonde. Oh, don't worry, Mr. Valentine. I'll take care of Frank. Who is it? Oh, put that gun down, Frank. It's Claire. Oh. You're Mr. Valentine's assistant, aren't you? What do you want? Well, Mr. Valentine's just down the street at your aunt's house. What do you want? Well, I was with them, but then they wanted to talk alone, so... Well, they sort of left me stranded. Don't I look stranded? Yeah. Well, your aunt was giving Mr. Valentine an earful. She's not very fond of you, is she? You can't forget that I was once a wild kid. I, I have straightened out since then. Oh, I can see that. What do you want? I want to come in. Use the phone to call a cab. Why didn't you stop at a drugstore? Oh, well, all right, if that's the way you feel about it. Good night. Wait a minute. Hmm? It's pretty late for you to be wandering around. Oh, uh, I knew you had fine instincts, Frank. Oh, all right, come on, I'll take you in my car. <laughs> Okay, Sonny, come on. The coast clear? Yeah, they just drove away in Frank's car. Now, don't turn on the light. Excuse me for asking, Mr. Valentine, but just what are we looking for? We are looking for a book. More Mother Goose? No, The Isle of Love. There ought to be a copy just like this one somewhere in here. But why do you want two copies? Don't you understand, Sonny? I've got to have Mr. Harding's copy of this book. Oh, no, I don't understand. <laughs> Never mind. Just start looking. Yeah, but Mr. Valentine, there's at least a thousand books in the shop. Let's see now. Mary Hayden Lamb was a local writer. Now, why would Harding choose her book unless... Well, wait a minute. I think I got it, Sonny. He must have known her. Well, what of it? That means it would be Harding's personal book, see? Oh! No, I don't see. <laughs> come on. There's a little room in the back of the store. Remember? That's where Frank was hiding the last time we were here. Yeah, that's right. Well, come on. It's dark. Careful now. Here we are. I'll look around with my flashlight. Now, let's see. Hey, there's a desk, Mr. Valentine. Are there any books on it? Sure. Read the titles. Webster's Dictionary? The Complete Shakespeare? 
cooking for fun? And the Isle... The Isle of Love, that's it. Grab it, Sonny, and let's get out of here. Okay, Mr. Valentine. We'll take it back to the office. Hey, aren't we ever going to get to sleep tonight? We haven't time. Now, let's get to the car. Sonny, duck. Jeepers, what was that? Somebody took a shot at it. Mr. Valentine. It's all right, Sonny, you missed. Yeah, but let's get out of here quick. I don't think that person likes us. And then somebody started shooting at us. Oh, it was plenty exciting, sis. You're lucky. Frank's a bore. This conversation is brilliant. It's either yeah or yeah. I guess it was Mrs. Harding shooting at us, huh, Mr. Valentine? Because Frank was with Claire. Not for long. No? No, he just took me to a cab stand. I see. Run out of charm? Oh. Gee, but Mr. Valentine, you've just about taken that book apart. Well, there's nothing in here. No secret compartment, no writing on the pages. I can't find a thing. Well, then let's go home and get some sleep. No, we can't stop now. Okay, kids, make yourselves comfortable. What are you going to do? Well, I'll have to start reading the book. Aloud? Certainly. I might miss something going to read all of it? That's right. Here we go. The summer sun was setting in a blaze of glory, casting its light like a shimmering ribbon of golden orange across the lake. On the bank, her wavy hair streaming from her uplifted head stood Jennifer. Oh, I can tell this is going to be a classic. Perhaps her dream of love was to become a reality, for coming toward her was a canoe, and in the canoe was a man. Mr. Valentine. You think Sonny's old enough? I'll keep quiet, will you? Jennifer sighed longingly. <sighs> Sonny. Perhaps her stay on the island was at an end. Her face was alive with expectancy. Weeks had gone by. Jennifer knew that this was her man. What choice did she have on a desert island? In spite of his aloofness, in spite of his air of mystery, Jennifer knew that she loved him. And then a wonderful thing happened. He knelt beside her and kissed her. Well, it's about time. (laughs) Oh, she said, then you do love me. Naive creature, isn't she? Yes, he answered. I love you with all my heart. If you don't believe me, look carefully when the grandfather's clock strikes the hour of midnight. And I love you, too, she told Wait him. Wait a minute. What was that again? And I love you, too, she told him. No, no, no. Go back to where he loves her. Oh, yes, he answered. I love you with all my heart. If you don't believe me, look carefully when the grandfather's clock strikes the hour of midnight. Hey, that doesn't make sense. Hey, wait a minute. Wait a minute. The printing on this page looks a little different. Yeah, so does the paper. Claire, get my copy of the book. Here it is. Okay. Turn to page 82. Come on, come on. Okay, now read that part. Yes, he answered. I love you with all my heart. I swear it, Jennifer. That's enough. This is it, kids. Mr. Harding printed this page himself. Look carefully when the grandfather's clock strikes the hour of midnight. Mr. Valentine, there's a grandfather's clock in the bookshop. That's right, Sonny. And there's where that money must be hidden. Claire, get Mrs. Harding on the phone. Tell her to meet us at the bookshop right away. At this hour? And then phone Frank at the shop. Tell him to expect us. All right. Oh, and Claire, phone Miss Berry, will you? She wanted to be in on the kill. Oh, now you've got me phoning your blonde for you. Well, whatever you say, Mr. Valentine. What are you waiting for, Mr. Valentine? Why don't you give me my money? You mean my money, Aunt Harriet. Now, don't fight over the money. We don't even know if there is any. Then why did you call up here? Then why bring Alice into this? Well, if there is any money, you'll have to thank Alice. She gave me the clue. Then it really was a clue, Mr. Valentine. That's right, Alice. It led me to a book. And in the book, I found some words that Mr. Harding printed. It said... Look carefully when the grandfather's clock strikes the hour of midnight. The grandfather's clock? I'm going to see about that. Now, take it easy, Frank. Now, Frank, that's not your property. Get away from that clock. There's nothing in here. The clue didn't say there was something in the clock. It said, look carefully when the grandfather's clock strikes the hour of midnight. Well, it's striking 12 now. Well, what's different about the clock when it strikes 12 than at any other time? When it strikes 12, both hands point up. (laughs) Smart girl, Claire. Sonny, hand me that chair. Okay. You think there's something on top of the clock? No, above it, on the wall here. Yeah, see? There's a false panel. Need any help? Oh, thanks, Frank. I think I could do it with the heel of my hand. That does it. What is it? Is there something in there? Yes, a package. What's in it? Just a minute, I'll see. Well, well, well. Bill, large denominations, 
and lots of them. Let me have that. Now, don't rush me. Hey, there's a note here, too. What does it say? This is Harding. Is this your husband's handwriting? No. No, it isn't. That's my father's handwriting. You see, the money is mine. Not so fast, Frank. Well, what does the note say? It says, Dear Brother Bill, I'm leaving this money in your care. Frank is too wild to be trusted with it. When he settles down, you can give it to him. Then give it to him. Oh, wait a minute, there's more. There's a condition I attach to this. Frank must provide for you and your wife as long as either of you shall live. Is that all? That's it, Mrs. Harding. Then it is Frank's money. Give it to him. He doesn't have to provide for me. No, this money is for both of us, Aunt Harriet. Well, that's more than I deserve, Frank. You can stop talking right now and hand that money over. Alice! Miss Barrett! Give it to me, Mr. Valentine, and hurry up about it. I never argue with a beautiful woman, especially when she has a gun in her hand. Mr. Valentine, was she the one who was after the money all along? That's right. When she phoned me and got bumped on the head, I thought it was funny I didn't hear the blow over the telephone. And if she was hit from behind, why was the bruise on the forehead? Never mind the explanations. Hand that over. Then she's the one who shot at us. Certainly. She couldn't get in here to look for the book because Frank was guarding the place. First, she tried to put me off the track with that Mother Goose stuff. But she finally gave me the right clue. She figured if she told me the truth, I'd get the money and she'd tail me and pick it up. That's enough out of you, Mr. Valentine. Give me the money. Oh, certainly. Here you are, Miss Barry. But, Mr. Valentine... Now don't try to stop her, Frank. It's dangerous. You're right. It is dangerous. Say just where you are. Don't any of you make a move. But, Mr. Valentine... Careful. But you're letting her get away. Not very far. The police are out there. Let's go! Let's go! Hey, it's okay, Mr. Valentine. They got her. Go. Your money will be returned to you, Frank. Thanks, Mr. Valentine. I, I owe you a lot. That's right. But you'll get a bill in the morning. Come on, kids. Good night, Mr. Valentine. Good night. Good night. Well, I'm really going to sleep tonight. Yeah, so am I. Oh, too bad. Too bad it had to end this way. Huh? What do you mean? He's thinking about the nurse. Aren't you, Mr. Valentine? You know, Claire, I believe she was a natural blonde after all. George will be back in a moment. Meanwhile, it doesn't matter whether you sit in an office or ride a tractor. Life these days seems to be getting more complicated for everybody. Any convenience that makes living a little simpler is always as welcome as spring. Your Chevron dealer knows this, as any friendly businessman should. So he tries to make you his friend by making his cream green and burgundy station as convenient and efficient as he can. He'll make it a point to know your car and the grade of RPM compounded motor oil you use. He'll urge you to use a Chevron credit card because he wants to save you time. He handles Chevron Supreme gasoline because he knows it'll give you good going wherever you drive. He takes the trouble to know the country nearby so that he can give you good travel tips. When you get right down to it, at Chevron gas stations, you get the same sort of convenient service you expect from any other wide-awake home-owned business. Get acquainted with the one near you. You'll like it. Well, next week, George Valentine is confronted with a problem, a big problem. You'll probably hear something like this. Client or no client, Mr. Valentine, you can't keep a dog that big in this apartment. Jeepers, do you realize he eats six pounds of food a day? Six pounds? What kind of food? Well, I'm not sure, but he seemed awfully fond of my head. <laughs> okay, Sonny. Go out and buy him a bone. Chevron gas stations all through the West invite you to be with us again next week for another chapter of Let George Do It, brought to you by the makers of Chevron Supreme Gasoline and RPM Compounded Motor Oil. Let George Do It, starring Robert Bailey as George with Francis Robinson as Claire and Eddie Firestone Jr. as Sonny, is written by Pauline Hopkins, produced and directed by Owen Vincent. Others in the cast were Jane Morgan as Mrs. Harding, Harry Bartell as Frank Harding, Evelyn Scott as Alice Berry, and Paul McVeigh as Mr. Ward. The music was composed and conducted by Charles Dant. Your announcer, John Heaston. Listen again next week, same time, same station, to Let George Do It. This is the Mutual Don Lee Broadcasting System.